Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this week. And it's going to be week number eight for the NFL Power Rankings. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for week eight. And what a fantastic week this is going to be for these Power Rankings. It is just a weird, wacky weekend. <laughs> we've, we've had some really good games, some really like weird endings to games. Looking at you, Todd Gurley. But uh, first off, we're going to start out with 10 through 6, and we're going to do a little bit of a rapid fire. Rapid fire. So here they are. All right. Buffalo Bills. The Chicago Bears. L.A. Rams. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Baltimore Ravens. And now, folks, it is time for the top five. Here we go. Answer... Give it to them. Well, thanks, Michael Buffer over there. Mm. They almost pulled it out today. The Tennessee Titans. They really did a, had an amazing game today. They just fell short. After being down 24-7 to at halftime, they came back to lose by a field goal. Skoskowski just can't hit it. I guess Belichick got rid of him at the right time. So, quick question before we start going into some more stats here. You are keeping the Titans at number five. Even though they lost, yeah, yeah. they kind of knew about him. But AJ Brown, another big, another big outing today. You know, six catches, one fifty-three, and a touchdown along a seventy. You know, Tannehill was uh, what was Tannehill's stat line? I believe you have that. Yeah, Ryan Tannehill, eighteen of thirty, two twenty, two touchdowns, zero picks against that awesome Steelers defense. But they did hold, you know, our the the man child Derrick Henry. They did hold him to seventy-five yards on twenty carries, one touchdown. And then he was non-existent in the receiving game, having two catches for a negative three yards. Some people need to drop the dolphin stench on Tannehill mm. because he is not that player anymore, and it's clearly obvious, at least to me anyway, and it sounds like to the answer over here as well. I mean, he had 13 touchdowns and two interceptions this year, so it's not like he's not he's not playing well. I mean, he's playing he's really playing well. great for Tannehill, I think, anyway. Next on the list is my favorite team. And I'm sure a lot of yours, the Green Bay Packers. Ugh. Now, they had a game today Barf. that, you know, obviously they should have won. I mean, they took on the Texans. Granted, you know, the Texans had a rough, rough beginning to the season with who they all had to face. They only have one win. Should have <laughs> been an easy win for the Packers. I mean, have you seen yes. Houston's terrible secondary? Yes, and, like, obviously Rodgers was going to, you know, have fun with that, which he did today to the tune of, you know, 283 yards and four touchdowns and you know what you know he he loves playing in dallas he always has good games maybe it's just texas all around because here's his last two games which he played there in 12 and then sunday he's had two games in houston for 621 yards and 10 touchdowns only sacked twice and so that's like a combined rating of i'm no math major but i believe it's like a, a 130 rating or something like that it, so somewhere in he there. just loves he must just love playing in texas i don't think he i i don't think he's ever lost in texas that a game that he started now he came in in 2007 to replace Favre when he got hurt but otherwise every game he started in texas including at the super bowl he won uh, you know and real quick before we get off this houston Please trade J.J. Watt to a different team. J.J. Like the Packers. I understand J.J. Watt's loyalty to the Houston, but Very dude, well. it is time to hit the ejecto seat cuz. So then I, you know, last week I kind of ragged on Devontae Adams. I don't know, maybe he listened to it because uh, he came out balling today. Uh, he had 13 for 196 and two touchdowns. Just seemed like any time they needed to get any yards... Rodgers just found him. And if you look at the stat line, because we don't really need to give it to you any more than what we have, it was basically the Devontae Adams show. So Adams is joining an elite club as having two games with over 150 yards and two touchdowns. He joins in a Steven club with uh, Sterling Sharp from 1989. You're just so place. excited about that. Oh, yeah. And then, then I, I didn't even realize he did this. I guess if you, you can look on YouTube. They have, like, Brett Favre touchdowns from, like, every year. And then... Antonio Freeman did it in 1998. What an elite club, club right there in yeah. Packer history. Yeah, cool. Oh, it's Dave's second favorite team. Ugh. Next on the list is your reigning, defending Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City and crushing the Broncos. 
and fellow and fellow uh, spokesperson for State Farm, I might add. <laughs> Dude, I will say uh, you have a great stat that you can share about Le'Veon Bell, but I have a feeling when it comes to playoff time, he's along with uh, Edward Hilaire, and I probably butchered his name there. Nope, nope. They are going to be a dynamic duo in the playoffs dude yeah the statistician actually brought this one to me which was very impressive his first run today first run for the chiefs was a 16 yard run his longest run his entire tenure i guess you could say with the jets 15 yards so that just shows his second longest run right that was his longest run for the jets no there you go folks Already crushing it. <laughs> Already crushing with it. With the Kansas City Chiefs. And it's just like, why? I mean, Mahomes is so good. Why do you have to give him so many more weapons? He's just. Dude, Hardman. I mean, come on. They got Hardman, Hill, Kelsey, Bell, Edwards Lear. Uh, there was. There's they used their fullback. Like they one used to two more guys that I don't even have Sammy names Watkins of. Sammy right Watkins is out this Sammy. Week. They're able to score on all facets of the game today. They scored offensively, which obviously that's going to always happen. But then Sorensen had a pick six, and then they had it. Then after the pick six, Denver marches right back down the field. <laughs> Granted, they only got a field goal out of it, but hey, they had to be feeling good about themselves, only to kick it off and have it get returned by Pringle for 101 Two, yards, 102, 102, 102 yards. Mm-hmm. When you have all those weapons, and you know you have them signed for a long time. Good, good things yeah, the, the playoff run with Kansas City is going to be fun to watch. It's just you got to watch the blueprint of how the Raiders did it and how they don't even get us started on the Raiders. But they gotta, they gotta. Teams have to follow that blueprint or San Diego for three quarters. Next on the list is uh, our foes from the Northwest, Seattle Seahawks. I like Russell Wilson except for when he plays against us. I mean, he was a badger. I mean, he's always it seems like he always has like a Kate or a locket that he has for a wide Speedy. receiver. But he's got DK Metcalf, which dude, coming out of college, you're like, ah, he's fast, he's big, but he can only run look strong. He, he can only run fly patterns and like slants and posts. Okay, I'm sold. I, he's he's a big body, and if he's fast, you can't teach speed. So then you were wondering why, you know, Tennessee got in there. Well, because the team well, that they lost drop. to by a field goal was the Pittsburgh Steelers. One I cannot argue with because they look good. And I might have underestimated their defense a little bit. Now you can say, hey, Dave, well, second half, Tennessee almost came back and won that. Mm-hmm. But they didn't. The Steelers' defense now, it might not be the steel curtain of old, but they're number one in... QB hits, pressures, sacks, sacks per game. You have T.J. Watt, who has five and a half sacks on the year. The team as a whole has 26, which you may think, well, that's not that many. In this modern NFL where they do like, pretty to, good like they like to do like quick hitters, they don't – if they have long developing pass plays, it's like max protection and stuff like that. So they're still doing that. What concerned me was like – I mean, still Big Ben, but – he knows better than than to throw a stupid interception in the end zone that almost cost them. <laughs> Big Ben has, I think, a nice trio now around him. He's got Juju. He's got Deontay Johnson, who had nine mm-hmm. for eighty for two touchdowns. Also, Juju had nine for eighty-five. The, and like I said, Claypool. It and now Big Ben is back to having those weapons Poor of like, hmm, who am I going to go to today? And he still has James Conner. S- the Steelers right now, they do seem like they have a nice, complete team. I mean, mm-hmm. other than Kansas City that scored in all three phases, and then Seattle has a great offense, as we've seen right now, just no defense. So that's why the Steelers right now are putting at number one. That's Hey, 6-0, that's no, you can't argue 6-0. No. Can't argue it. Bring it. Can't have it. Can't, can't have, have it. it. So there you have it. There's the power rankings for this week. Like, comment, subscribe to our podcast page. Tell us who you think is in the top five. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. I'll tell you you're not right. I'm right. What? We are right. Yes. We are right. 